Grace and peace, friends and family. Welcome to another conversation. This is Joy. I hope that you are all doing well and taking care of yourself and continuing to pursue your most significant state. Today, I wanted to talk to you about blame shifting. Narcissists, as we all know, are the accuser of the brethren. Like, listen, we know that narcissists, first of all, they create this fantasy world where everybody plays a role in their life. So if there is a narcissist in your life or has been in your life, you're well aware that everybody has a particular role. And the only one who gets to decide what role who plays is the narcissist. They are the creative director and that's it. Nobody gets to say so. They decide, are you the target or are you going to be a flying monkey? Are you the victim or are you a supporting cast? And even within those roles, there are different subsections that everybody gets to play. And everybody in their lives is part of the narcissistic harem, the love cult. Because in so many ways, narcissists are just cult leaders. Everybody has to bow down and worship them. First of all, let's just pause here. That's a form of idol worship because that they want to be idolized. They are not happy unless they are getting all the praise, honor, and adulation. And that in itself is incredibly problematic. But every person that is in the narcissist's life provides some source of fuel. Otherwise, they would not be there. Everybody, every single person provides fuel. Blame shifting is how the narcissist keeps their hands clean. And this is where the flying flying monkeys become the supporting cast. They support the narcissist in further victimizing and traumatizing the target. And some of them, some of these flying monkeys are well aware. They know they are just as toxic and probably narcissists themselves working in tandem with this narc to complete the assignment of those of them that sent them right but there are those that are still asleep not everybody is aware that this is who the narcissists are remember narcissists are predators and they select people for different roles for a specific reason so some may have simply drank the kool-aid that was served and believe everything that the narc has told them but at the end of the day the narcissist is narking and everybody is providing nothing more than narcissistic supply. When it comes to blame shifting, this is simply a way that the narcissist absolves themselves of, account of accountability while it affords them the opportunity to devalue their targets in plain sight. They find a way to discredit their victims for the, their behavior. How crazy is this? This is why I say they are the um, they are the accusers of the brethren, and this is in Revelations twelve and ten. They discredit the victim for the very things that they are doing, for their own behavior and actions. It's crazy. But you know, there's different ways that they do this. They sow th seeds of confusion not just in the victim or the target but in the supporting cast because they have to paint everything a particular way remember it's all a big production because things have to go a particular way in a narcissist's life if you ever see that when you act out of character or when you act out of order or you think for yourselves and you throw things off for the narcissist that's a narcissistic injury and it, it gets a narcissistic rage and you get punished for it silent treatment gaslighting some form of punishment because you have to be brought back into correction like this is demented and it's twisted it's not right but this is how they think that's why it's a cult because you can't come out of character you can't come out of your you know the the role that you've been given you have to do exactly what you were trained to do and this is crazy but this is how it is but you see they sow these seeds of confusion, they sow seeds of division, and that's why narcissists compartmentalize people to keep them away from each other. Like, listen, the Bible tells us that where there is unity, God commands a blessing. So here the narcissist is, is keeping people away from each other. 
and why to keep people from interacting and the truth from coming out from people actually talking and sharing the truth and getting to know who they are at the core and figuring out who's who in the show and stepping outside of this confused reality show and encountering real life that's what they don't want and what ends up happening is that they have people or they if you're not careful the narcissist will have you walking around in a state of bitterness in a state of brokenness in a state of resentment in a state of unforgiveness angry frustrated desperate isolated lonely I mean you can you can continue to add more emotions but if you look at those type of emotions none of them speak life to you all of those things wear you down they wear your soul and your spirit down and it takes you to the to a dark destructive place and it doesn't just work against I mean it doesn't it works against nobody but you those emotions bitterness resentment unforgiveness who do that who does that affect the most who does that affect you while the narcissist is over there continuing with the whole show with another supply with another person just carrying on like life is everything is fine and dandy while you are stuck with these emotions one of the one of the major problems about this is that those emotions bitterness resentment unforgiveness affect your spiritual life they affect your daily life because it keeps you from it keeps you you know it keeps you bound to pain it keeps you bound to that situation it keeps you loyal to toxic emotions and situations and memories and you don't get to walk out into your truth you don't get to walk into healing you don't get to walk into you don't experience joy love peace the fruits of the spirit hello but here's the thing if you don't if you don't go through a healing process and you don't release these feelings what ends up happening is strongholds form in your life and those themselves out of feelings within your own heart which you may rightfully so have had cause to feel those things right because an offense was done oh okay they did something that was an it was an offense now they got you walking out in a spirit of offense hello somebody this spirit of offense is a dangerous thing and i want to say something about that spirit of offense that is the same spirit that kept moses from walking into the promised land moses was not supposed to strike the rock but he did and that's what kept him from the actually entering the promised land sometimes you are so close to achieving some of your biggest dreams and goals and and everything that you have ever worked for in your life even after the narcissist is gone and you can't understand why am I always almost there why do I always almost achieve this why can't I get that promotion why am I always overlooked for this but then when we sit down and we consider that there is a spirit of offense that rests heavily on the inside of you and now we need to start unpacking and dealing with the root cause of these issues repent and renounce those things so that you can walk into your promised land moses couldn't go to the promised land he could only see it so when you're at that almost when you see that thing and it's almost in your reach it's kind of like moses but you gotta let those things go so that you can lay hold of what is rightfully yours and this is where they 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 keep you in bondage and it's so important that you get it so that you sever this thing at the root they do not deserve any play in your mind whatsoever and when they don't deserve any play in your mind i mean any part of your life like grasp this thing please they don't deserve any more play time any more air time any more mental space they don't deserve it you deserve to walk out everything every promise god has for you in your life you deserve to walk it out you deserve to lay hold of it your bloodline deserves it and a narc would hold would, would, would be the cause for you not to walk into your destiny to keep you from experiencing the fullness of all the promises that are upon your life bet I don't think so it's time to really sit back and search our hearts and say okay 
Are there any unrepentant areas? Is there a spirit of offense within me? I didn't even come here to talk about offense, but it just came. And so here we are. But that keeps you in bondage and it keeps you living under a curse. There's a scripture and because I wasn't really prepared to talk about a curse, but it talks about there is no cause. There is no curse without a cause. And so it's almost like this, these, those um, unforgiveness, resentment, create a an opening for these things to t um or you know they create an opening for offense to set in place and then you can't and this is all because of this blame shifting and and just not even blame shifting but the overall emotional abuse and the experience with the narcissist but you know when it comes to blame shifting, they really will discredit the victim for their own behavior and action. And that's why I guess they, it's called blame shifting. But that's just the accuser of the brethren doing what they're commissioned to do. And when you consider that the blame shifting happens with sleep deprivation, gaslighting, triangulation, projection, verbal abuse, smear campaigns, flying monkeys, it is a lot. And it's a lot for one person to take in. And because this is a show, right? And I mean, this is our real lives. But to the narcissist, this is a show because this is the only time that they get to feel important and that they are on a stage of something in their eyes that is meaningful. But this is your life. And during the love bombing stage, they set the scene. You are high on cloud nine thinking everything is great, but they are setting the scene. They are talking about you behind your back. They're infiltrating your inner circle and set, sowing seeds of doubt, confusion, division, discourse among your own people. Yow. They are the sneakiest of the lot, but that's why that's why the Bible tells us that the serpent is a crafty, cunning person. And sometimes, you know, we can get carried away and call him a raggedy, ratchet fool and these things. But let's never, ever forget that that serpent is wise and he is cunning. It may can, it may take him a minute to find the right the right tactic. I'm getting tongue tied here. It might take him a moment to find the right tool to get you down. But if you don't keep growing, if you don't stay in your word, if you don't stay um, praying, and I mean praying and, and suited up and, and, you know, just staying, staying in the presence of the Lord and continuing to fellowship with the brethren because iron sharpens iron, he'll catch you off guard. But that's not going to happen here because I reject that for any of you that are listening and anybody that is connected to you because we are going to rise. We are going to soar. We are going to press into the presence of the Lord. We are going to fall on our face. We are going to seek his will for our lives. We are going to ask that he would purge our hearts. We are going to ask that he would reveal the condition of our hearts. We are going to be in our word and we are going to study our word and we are going to fall in love with the word of God. We are going to ask, like, before we study the word, Lord, please show me what it is that you are teaching me. Holy Spirit, take me to where you want me to be in this word and let this word become alive in me. And then we're going to study and we are going to enjoy the word of God because it is our daily bread. It is our peace. It is our joy. It is our strength. It is our hope. It is what we need day to day. And sometimes, family, it's what we need moment by moment. All of this blame shifting, they've been doing all of that, setting up the scene behind, you know, behind your back while they love bombing you so that when they start telling other people that this is who you are and that you did this and they are now making you responsible for their mess, then they can tell you that, oh yeah, the church believes me, the pastor believes me, your coworkers, the authorities just to make you feel even worse than you already do. But never forget, you are dealing with the accuser of the brethren. That's what they're supposed to do. But I want you to remember who you are. You are, <laughs> you are the one. You are the one that was 
that was called, that was ordained, that was appointed, that was sanctified. You are the one that was chosen. You are God's beloved. You are you are the one, the royal one, the royal priesthood called out of darkness into the marvelous light. You are that one sheep that God, that Jesus would leave all 99 to pursue, to find you. You are the one that if it was only you on earth, only you in sin and everybody else was a saint, he would still hang on Calvary's cross for you. That's how loved you are. So never forget who you are. And whenever you are feeling down and whenever you are feeling low, Try to put things in perspective about who you are and remember that you have been purchased by such a precious price. There is no value or no monetary amount that can that can, you know, measure what you are worth. Men cannot define it. A narcissist can't even come close to it. You are valuable. You are loved. You are redeemed. You are restored. You are healed. The righteousness of Christ is upon you. Beloved, you are so much more. Anything that the narcissist offers you, understand, is not love. That is the accuser of the brethren. It is not love. And then, you know just be very careful um about you know how you're processing your healing but i'm i'm always going to tell you please go to therapy if you have to go to coaching and do what you have to do but you must always always make sure that your goal is to come out of this thing on top you are more than a conqueror through him who loves you they blame ships simply to avoid responsibility for their disrespectful behavior and then focus on your reaction. And this is why it's so important that you are mindful of how you engage with them if you have to, because you want to respond and not react. That's how you starve the narcissist. It's so normal. I mean, it's normal to feel hurt. It's normal to be betrayed, angry, and upset when they're abusive or anybody is abusive towards you. But the thing is, never ever beg for an apology. Don't ever chase somebody to explain your situation. Never ask somebody to um, to validate you. Listen, all of that happened on Calvary's cross. All of that happened. You were loved then. You were accepted then. You were redeemed. You were purchased. You are all of those things that that person can't even comprehend you. The problem is they shouldn't have been in your life in the first place. And they've just come to project how they feel because, hello, the accuser of the brethren, they already know their fate. They already feel raggedy and dusty on the inside. And so what else to make you feel that way? That's why they sow those seeds of confusion and division and all of those all of those vile things so that they can leave you in that state of bitterness, resentment, unforgiveness, and keep you bound by your spirit of offense. It's now your responsibility to take that next step. It's not always easy, but you owe it to yourself. You owe it to yourself. There is something so unique and special about you. That's why your DNA is unique to you. That's why your fingerprints are unique to you. There is nobody on this earth that is like you. God was so intentional about you that he had to make sure that you were in the earth at this time. That's because there is something valuable about you. And we are going to continue to pursue our most significant state and get to that point where we see what God says about you. Heaven already spoke a more superior word concerning your life than what a narcissist did. Come into agreement with what heaven spoke over your life. You may not know what it is, but all you have to do is say, God, I come into agreement with what you have spoken over my life. And you continue to tell yourself that until you figure it out or until he tells you what it is, but it's all in his word. So family, that's it for today. I want to thank you so much for your time. Continue to come from behind and honor yourself. You are you are loved and I thank you and God bless you.